Did you know that if the atom was the size of a football stadium, the nucleus would be the equivalent of the size of a small marble in the middle? Here's a flash revision guide on atomic structure and electron structure. And in this video, we'll cover what an atom is made out of, what relative atomic mass is, and how electrons are arranged in an atom. Let's get into it. Let's take a look at the structure of atoms. Everything in the universe is made up of atoms and the atoms themselves are made up of what we call subatomic particles. There are three types of these subatomic particles which are known as protons, neutrons and electrons. Protons and neutrons are both found in the centre of an atom in what we call a nucleus, which is where most of the atom's mass is concentrated. Electrons are found around the nucleus, orbiting it, at specific distances which we call electron shells or energy levels. Each of these subatomic particles have specific charges and masses. Both protons and neutrons have the same relative mass of 1, whereas electrons are 2000 times smaller, which we can just say is very small. In terms of charges, protons have a positive charge of plus 1, electrons have a negative charge of minus 1, and neutrons are neutral and have a charge of 0. In terms of size, atoms are incredibly small and have a radius of around 0.1 nanometers or 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. The nucleus in the middle has a radius of 1 times 10 to the minus 14 meters, which is 10,000 times smaller than that of the whole atom. That's the equivalent of a football stadium as the atom, and a marble in the middle being the nucleus. Atoms of specific elements can be represented like this, with the symbol of the specific element and two numbers next to it. The larger number is known as the mass number or atomic mass, and the smaller number is known as the atomic number or proton number. The mass number tells you the number of neutrons plus protons in an atom of that element, and the atomic number tells you the number of protons. Atoms as a whole don't have an overall charge and are neutral. So as protons have a charge of plus one and electrons have a charge of minus one, all atoms need to have the same number of protons and electrons in order for the charges to cancel out and to make the atom neutral. So this means that in an atom, the number of electrons is also equal to the atomic number. If you wanted to find out the number of neutrons in an atom, you can just subtract the atomic number from the mass number. As an example, let's work out the number of each subatomic particle in the following elements. Lithium has an atomic number of 3, which means the number of protons in it is also 3. As this is a neutral atom, the number of electrons is also 3. To work out the number of neutrons, you just minus the mass number from the atomic number, so that's 7 minus 3 to give you 4 neutrons. We can do the same thing for potassium, so its atomic number is 19, so that means its proton and electron numbers are also 19. For neutrons, you can just do 39 minus 19 to give you 20 as the number of neutrons. So out of these three subatomic particles, it's the number of protons that tell you what element an atom belongs to. That's because all atoms of a particular element have the same number of protons. For example, any atom with six protons in it are carbon atoms. This is because the element carbon has an atomic number of six. This is just something you can find by looking in the periodic table. Now if you were to add a proton to a carbon atom, the atom will no longer be carbon and its element will change to whatever element has an atomic number of 7. And by checking this on the periodic table, you can see that it's nitrogen. So simply put, we can say that changing the number of protons in an atom changes its element. If you were to change the number of electrons in an atom and keep the number of protons the same, the element of that atom would not change. Instead, the atom would become a charged ion, which we'll talk about in a different video. Now, if you were to change the number of neutrons in an atom, its element would still stay the same, but the atom would change to an isotope of that element. So let's look deeper into what isotopes are. They are defined as atoms of the same element with the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. Every element has isotopes of itself and you can think of them as different forms of the same element. For example, carbon can have three isotopes known as carbon-12, carbon-13 and carbon-14. All three of these are the same element carbon so they have the same number of protons or atomic number of six. As they are all neutral atoms, this means they also have the same number of electrons to cancel out the charges. The mass numbers of these are given by the number after the names which are 12, 13 and 14. So 
So we can find the number of neutrons by subtracting the atomic number from the mass number to give us 6, 7 and 8 neutrons. As you can see, these are isotopes of carbon as they all have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Now you can use information about the isotopes of an element to find out its relative atomic mass. Each element that exists has its own relative atomic mass and they are found in the periodic table as the bigger number of the two. It's basically an average of the mass numbers of all the isotopes of a particular element. But it's not simply taking all the mass numbers and finding their average value. It involves taking into account the abundance of the isotopes. You can think of abundance as how common a particular isotope is. If you took a sample of chlorine gas for example, you would roughly find two different isotopes in the sample. Chlorine 35 and Chlorine 37. But they aren't equal amounts of both. Around 75% of the sample would be Chlorine 35 and 25% would be Chlorine 37. So to find the relative atomic mass of an element and take the abundances into account, you have to multiply the mass number by the percentage abundance for each isotope that exists for the element. You then add each of these values together and divide the result by 100. So let's try and work out the relative atomic mass of Chlorine by using this equation. So for isotope 1, we can use its mass number, which is 35, and multiply it by the abundance of 75. And for isotope 2, it would be a mass number of 37, multiplied by 25. You can then add them together and divide the whole thing by 100 to give you a final answer of 35.5. And if you check this on the periodic table, you'll see that chlorine does have a relative atomic mass of 35.5. Finally, let's run through electron structure of atoms. The electrons in atoms exist at specific distances from the nucleus known as energy levels or shells. But each energy level can only hold specific number of electrons. The first shell is the innermost energy level with the lowest amount of energy and can only hold two electrons. The second and third are further out and they can each only hold eight electrons. The electrons in an atom only occupy the lowest available energy levels which are the innermost ones. So once the very inner shell is full with two electrons, the next lowest energy level is filled until it becomes full. You keep filling these shells up until you have used all the electrons that exist for that atom. This means you can work out the electron structure of an element just by knowing the number of electrons it has. So if we looked at chlorine as an example, we can see it has an atomic number of 17, which means in an atom of chlorine, there are 17 electrons. So to find the electron structure, you need to add the 17 electrons to the innermost shells, making sure not to add more than they can hold. So you first start off by filling the innermost shell with two electrons, which makes that shell full. You then need to add eight electrons to the next shell. And as there are seven electrons left, you can add them all to the third shell as the maximum that it can hold is eight. The electron configuration for chlorine is therefore said to be 287. And that's it for that topic guys. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.